Good morning, boys and girls. My name is Audrey Zorik, Director of Kids Connection right here at Vallejo Drive Church. We want to welcome you to another Kids Connection program. Kids Connection is a place where we learn how to connect with each other and with God. And if this is your first time, we want to welcome you and invite you to come back each and every Sabbath for a new program. And if you are a regular, we want to welcome you back. It's so good to have you worshiping with us today. Now, every Sabbath we get together, we talk, we have different topics, we sing different songs, we learn different things about God and that. And today, we have something very special for you, as always. Now, to get this program started, I'm going to invite you to stand up. Let's sing our song of the day. It's a very happy song. You guys know this song because we sang this song before, right here at Kids Connection. Let's get our Kids Connection program started. Sing with us. Wow, that was a fun and exciting song, wasn't it? Oh my goodness, I can sing this song all day. It's such an energetic song. Don't forget to come back during the week and check on our website down below where we're going to post this song for you so you can come back and keep listening to this song all week because there's a whole lot of change coming your way. Great. If you just sang that song with us, now I invite you to close your eyes, bow your heads so we can talk to Jesus and invite him to be a part of our program today. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for another beautiful day here at Kids Connection. We ask that you be with us today as we worship your name. Be with every child that are participating and are watching and mom and dad that are watching with them at home. Protect them, keep them safe as we worship together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Wonderful. Now we're going to listen to our story of the missionaries and we're going to participate of our offering together. However, before we go there, I want to share something with you. You know that Kid has been coming out and Kid is visiting some kids throughout the week, right? Okay. Well, I'm excited to let you know that Kid is going to visit Two more kids this afternoon, okay? So, kids, you know who sent us an email earlier this week and who contacted us for a kid to come by and visit you. 
So get ready. There's one child right here in Glendale, and there's another child in L.A. Actually, three kids in L.A. We're coming to visit you this afternoon. And to, excuse me, next Sabbath, we're going to show you uh, videos and pictures of the kids that we went to visit right here on our Kids Connection program. Now, last week and every week, we've been hearing about stories where the missionaries and what we are sending our money to support and what our money is supporting in other places of the world, right? Like last week, we learned about Spain. Well, today we're going to take another trip, another place in the world. Pay attention and let's watch our missionary stop story today. When doctors told Resta he had type 2 diabetes, he didn't know exactly what to do. He was immediately put on three medications and none of them seemed to help. Eventually, Resta visited a nearby Adventist healthcare clinic. At the clinic, they taught me how to change my lifestyle, and since then, I don't take any medication. I eat a vegan diet, and I work out a lot. Resta's health transformation inspired him to attend the Adventist University in Hungary to get certified in lifestyle consultation. Because I have diabetes, I really want to help other people with this disease. That's my motivation. Today, Resta is the coordinator of a global mission urban center of influence in Debrecen, the second largest city in Hungary. This center provides a number of services, including assault room, therapeutic massage, medical advice for asthma and lung problems, and grief and addiction counseling. From the first moment they come here, we tell them everything is based on Christianity. Our base is the Bible. The Christian care and professional services visitors receive encourage them to return for other programs. We are very lucky because God gave us six doctors who are church members and also more than 10 members who are working in the healthcare field. I think it's a good opportunity for us to help people and work together for people. I think it's a very important place because in church we can treat the spiritual health of people. And here, we can treat the body and give them advice about the body. I think this place is like a bridge between the people of the city and the church. This urban center of influence started through total member involvement when Anna Maria decided to open a small bookstore where people could relax, socialize, and browse faith-based books. People don't have proper connections with each other. They are just rushing all the time. We were trying to reach out to those people who didn't have proper and pure connections with others. We wanted to pray with them and for them. Through this ministry, several people have come to know Jesus. When I heard, There's a woman who had several problems and came into the store. I was able to recommend some books and support. We talked, and I invited her to church, and she became a church member. It was like a miracle how much of a loving atmosphere there was. They were very kind to me. They offered for me to sit down and talk with them. I'm very thankful for this center, and I'm thankful I can share my new beliefs and love with others. Another way Adventists spread love is through their annual event called Reach Out with Flowers. Each year, one of the church members grows thousands of daffodils on his land and donates them for all the church members to give out freely in the community. Many people ask why we do this. The answer is simple. Just because we want to show love and be a blessing to people in the city. Adventists and Debreson are trying to connect with people in creative ways. Whether it's through medical services or partnering in city events, they want to be involved in the community. Please pray that their outreach efforts continue to spread the love of Jesus to the people of this large city. Thank you for supporting Global Mission, which supports projects like these in cities around the world. So good to see where our offerings are going and what people are doing to share the love of Jesus in other places of the world. Thank you so much for supporting the missionaries with your story by clicking on the link just above here and ask your mom and dad to donate to the missionaries. Thank you so much. Now, 
today I'm excited because as every now and then I do something different and we always participate and have different activities, right? Well, today I'm going to invite my daughters, Lanessa and Larissa, to come out here. Come on up. Hello. Awesome. So uh, today we're, they don't know what we're going to do yet. And I'm going to ask you guys at home to try to do this the same way. Okay. So right here, I have a roll of toilet paper. Why do we have a toilet paper right here? And if you guys have an actual toilet paper at home, I invite you to after the program, or you can do this with us. You're more than welcome to ask mom and dad to stand up and you're going to do something fun right now. Okay. So I'm going to hand you this toilet paper. Go ahead and unwrap it. Here we go. Unwrap the toilet paper. All right. You can get rid of this. Here we go. Now, this toilet paper, what I want you two to do between this side and this side, I am not going to move. I'm going to stay right here like a statue and you are going to wrap me with that toilet paper. Are you ready? You think it's going to be fun? I think it's going to be fun. Absolutely. So here we go. They didn't know I was going to ask them to do that. So here we go. Get that toilet paper ready. Open up. It's a brand new toilet paper. All right. So between the two of you, do whatever you want and wrap me as much as you as you want. Okay, so um, better so the kids can see it. It's like from here up. All right, ready, here we go. All right. Are you done? Oh, you're going to tuck it in on the back. Okay. How do I look, boys and girls? How is this? I'm going to turn around so you can see the back. There's the back. Make sure I'm not going to fall. Here's the front. How is this? You think I can... Oh, this... Oh, you're right here. <laughs> oh, all right. Okay. So, uh, <clears throat> here comes part two of my, our experiment and in, in our, our um, little activity here. Now what I want you to do, both of you, you still have the rest of the toilet paper in your hand, right? Okay, so now what I want you to do is I want you to grab the end of the toilet paper where you tucked it in the back. Okay, you disconnected it, great. Now I want you to roll the entire roll of toilet paper back to its original form. So try the best you can to roll the toilet paper back into the roll as fast as you can. Okay, 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 that's the deal, that's the deal. I'll spin, you roll, I'll spin, you roll. I'm getting dizzy. Are we there, are we there? Are we all rep? All right. So, this is what the toilet paper roll look like after they try to put it back together. It actually does like a ball from a distance. Look at this, it looks like a, a ball. You can't really see what it is. But, anyways, good job, good try. This is what happened. I'm going to explain it to you what happened here. And I want to see if you can do it at home. Are you able to wrap someone with toilet paper or paper towel and then retrieve that paper and put it back to its form without ripping or trying to keep it as a toilet paper and not a ball? Yeah? Okay. As fast as you can. Absolutely. So I want to hear from you. 
try to do this at home. Take pictures, take a video, send it to us, vdkidsconnection at gmail.com. I want to hear, I want to see what happened with your experience. And I'm going to explain, explain to you what this has to do with our lesson of the day. Good job, girls. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right. Now, I'm going to ask, uh, uh, actually, let's see if I can do a setup right here. I'm going to bring something from this side, something from this side. And I'm going to uh, raise a little table here. Okay, so our second activity of today, and what I want to share with you guys is this. I want to ask you boys and girls at home. Here I have a jar of water. It's clear water. Here's my little mixing stick. Here you go. It's just water. And here I have three coloring food. They are red, green, and yellow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix two colors into the water and I want you boys and girls to guess what this is. Okay? What color is going to turn the water is going to turn. So I'm going to get the red one and I'm going to go with one, two, three drops of red and I'm going to go with one, two, three, oops, four drops of yellow. Now, what color do you think this is going to turn to be? Ready? My mixing stick and there you go. What color is this? It is orange. If you guessed orange, you are absolutely correct. Good job. Now, uh, let's see. I'm going to make another mix. So here we go. I'm going to get a little bit of red. Where's red? Here it comes. Where's red? And I'm going to do one, two, three drops of red. And I'm going to go with one, two, three drops of yellow. Here we go. All right. My mixture is done. Now we have what color? Orange. Again. Hmm. We have orange again. All right. Fine. Let's try something else. I'm going to get the uh, red and I'm going to go with one, two, three drops of red. And I'm going to add, aha, this is this got to make a difference now. And I'm going to add one, two, three drops of the yellow. So, aha, for sure. Now this is going to work. My mixing stick and here it comes. Wait a second. What color is this? Huh? It is orange again. I can't believe it. I mix red and yellow, red and yellow, red and yellow. It was three times and I keep getting orange. Why am I still getting orange? Tell me why. I know you know. Huh. Wait. Could it be because... I am mixing the same colors over and over again. <gasps> I think that's what it was. Now, if I wanted to get a different color than orange, what did I have to do? Oh, I had to mix green. But I didn't see the green because it was hiding behind the jar. I was only able to get the red and the orange, excuse me, and the yellow. And when you mix red and yellow, you get the color orange. But because I did the same thing over and over again, I kept getting the same results. 
Hmm. Okay. What does this have to do with our lesson today? Well, I'm going to tell you. In our Bible study today, in our lesson, in your classroom, you're going to hear a story about some people in the past, from the Bible time. And what happened is that they were doing something that they couldn't reverse it. Do you remember the roll of, pa of toilet paper? Did you see what they did? Were they able to put the toilet paper back to its original format, original roll? No, they couldn't. So these people did something that they could not reverse it. And they kept doing the same thing over and over and over and over again. And every time they did that, something happened. You know, boys and girls, sometimes we do the same thing, don't we? We keep doing the same thing and we keep asking for forgiveness and we keep doing the same thing again. Hmm. I wonder what the people from the Bible had to do different. Well, we're about to find out what they had to do different and what they were doing that couldn't be undone because their actions could not be undone and they had we have to think about what we do just like the toilet paper and once you do it we have to be careful because once we do it certain things cannot be undone so pay attention to our story today and as we learn what happened to the people but before we go to our story i'm going to invite you to sing our song of the day one more time there's a whole lot of change coming your way. Let's sing together. There's a whole lot of change coming your way. Cause like it or not, nothing stays the same. So hold on tight and follow real close. God is good and he's in control. Great, 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 awesome, amazing song that we sang together. This was great. And I want to thank you, boys and girls, for singing along, for being a part of our Kids Connection program. Let's go ahead and close our program with a word of prayer. And then I have something else that I want to share with you. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, 
thank you so much because we believe in you that you can help us. We believe that there are changes that we need to make. Help us to learn from our story today about the things that we need to do in our lives and in, in, in every day. And uh, as we continue to worship, we ask for your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. Terrific. I had a lot of fun being a toilet paper mummy <laughs> right here and doing the experiment of the colors that we kept adding the same colors and getting the same result over and over again. I'm looking forward to see what your teacher is going to teach us today in our lesson. Now, I want to tell you uh, something else. I want to talk to you about something else today. This week, this past week now, all over the place, we've had kids, we've had teenagers, we've had young adults, we've had older people that all got something done together. And that is, they graduated. Well, some of them had a graduation. Others graduated from school. If you are not in school yet, it's okay. Don't worry. Very soon you're going to be in school. But today we're going to tell, we're going to talk about a lot of kids. Some of the kids graduated from first grade to second grade, from second to third, from third to fourth, from fourth to fifth, from fifth to sixth, and, and seventh and eighth. And if you were in kindergarten and you finish your kindergarten year today or this week, you celebrate your graduation. And I want to congratulate each and every one of you. I received some information from the parents that their, their children graduated, that you graduated from kindergarten. Others graduated from eighth grade. Some people graduated from high school. And I want to congratulate every one of you. This is, this is a, a, an achievement that you deserve to celebrate. And I'm so happy that you um, got to this point. And I want to ask that God blesses you as you take the next step, as you continue your life from now on. Well, we have something special prepared for you at, at our worship service today at 11 o'clock. Okay? So watch our 11 o'clock worship service. We're, we're going to mention some of the names that graduated. And if you don't see your name or if you don't see someone that you want to recognize, send us an email. Send us their picture. We want to show their picture in our program. So send it to the church, Vallejo at Grace and Condition.com, or you can send it to the kids. Kids Connection uh, program, which is VD Kids Connection at gmail.com. This afternoon, kids coming out. If kid has not been to your house yet to say hello to you from a distance, send us an email. Ask mom and dad, VD Kids Connection at gmail.com. Send us your name, your phone number, your address, and we are coming out. I'm going to drive kid to come out and say hi to you at your house. Thank you so much for watching our Kids Connection program today. God bless you. God keeps you safe. Very soon, we're hoping to have you all here so we can worship God together in the name of Jesus. Until then, until next week, I will see you. Be safe. I love you guys. I'll see you then. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining. See you next week. Bye-bye. Good morning, boys and girls. I'd like to welcome all of you here today. We have some new watchers. Their names are Elia and Ethan. Welcome. And I'd also like to welcome Amy and Cameron, Sunny, Rio and Gia, and Aiden, Benjamin, Carlina and Sammy, welcome, Max and Vita, Janie, Jade and Jax, Caitlin, JR and Seth, nice to see you today, Josiah, Ariane, Vashti and Moses, Will and Mia, welcome, Nicholas, Luke and John, Andrea, Zori and the new baby, Joshua, Jael, and Joy, Reese and Tyel, Estella, Federico, and Francisco. I hope you're all going to have a nice time at Saddle School today. Welcome, everybody. Well, today we're going to talk about people who kept going around in circles. Now, I want to know if you go around in circles, do you get anywhere? Let's give it a try. 
Stand up from your couch or your chair or wherever you're sitting. And I want you to pretend there's a big circle on the floor. And I want you to march around. Pretend we're going to the ice cream shop. March around. Keep going. March around and 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 around. Are we going to get to the ice cream store if we keep going around in circles? No, I don't think so. Hmm, let's pretend we want to go to Santa school. But we just keep on going in circles. Are you going to get anywhere if you keep on going in circles? No, you won't get anywhere. And that's just like the people that we're going to talk about today. They're called the Israelites. And the Israelites kept disobeying God's commands. And then they would get into trouble. Then they would ask God for help. And then he would rescue them and forgive them. But then they would just keep on doing the same thing again. Again, they disobeyed and got into trouble. And again, God rescued them and forgave them over and over and over again. Well, God had told Moses to lead the people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. And Moses had obeyed God and done whatever God had told him to do. He led the people right to the promised land. And when they got to the promised land, they were afraid to go in because they thought there were giants in the land and that they would not be able to take the land. So God said, you will wander around in the desert for 40 years and not be able to go into the promised land. Wow, they wandered around for 40 years until all the people that had disobeyed God had died. Well, Moses led the people back to the promised land, but because he disobeyed, he was not allowed to go into the promised land. Joshua became their new leader, and he's the one that led them into the promised land that God had said they would take. He led them in and they were living in the land, and God had said to drive out all the people that were living in the land. But the Israelites disobeyed. They let some of the people stay. Now, while Joshua was living, they followed God and did not do anything else. They did not worship idols. They followed God's commandments, just as they had promised on Mount Sinai. They didn't worship other gods. They kept the Sabbath. They obeyed their mommies and their daddies. They did everything that God had said. But when Joshua had died and they didn't have anybody to lead them, they thought, although they had God still to lead them, they started doing the wrong things. They started to worship idols. They knelt down and prayed to the idols instead of God. And God had said, you should not worship anyone but me. But they disobeyed because the people that lived around them worshiped idols in this way. And they started to make friends with the people that lived there. And they started to do what the other people were doing. When they started to disobey God and worship other gods, God allowed the countries around them to attack them and to take over their country so that they did ha not have much food because the people kept taking their food, kept taking their crops. There wasn't any rain on the land, so there weren't many crops anyway. But God allowed the people to be attacked by their neighbors. And when they were being attacked 
and were frightened for their lives, they turned to God and decided that they were doing the wrong thing. So they stopped worshiping the idols and they turned back to God. Instead of worshiping the idol, they worshiped God and they begged God to forgive them for the bad things that they had been doing. Well, of course, God forgave them. He forgave them and he helped them to get out of their trouble. And for a while, while the certain judge was living, Gideon here is one of the judges, he helped them to get out of trouble with God's help. But when Gideon stopped helping them, they started doing the same things again. They started worshiping idols again and following what their neighbors were doing. So again, God allowed them to be attacked. Then God raised up another judge to help them and her name was Deborah. And she again helped them with God's help to get out of trouble. And they were good for a while, but then Deborah was gone and they started worshiping idols again. God kept saving them and then they kept falling back into their sin. And then God brought up Samson as another judge for them. And again, he helped them to get out of trouble. But when they realized that Samson wasn't helping them anymore and that God had abandoned them again because they were sinning, they again got into trouble. Now they kept doing the same thing over and over and over again. Wow, it's kind of surprising that they kept doing the same thing, but they expected something different to happen. Well, there's a book in the Bible called Judges, and it has a list of the people that God called up to be judges for Israel. This happened many, many times. God wanted to be Israel's leader, and if they had followed the commands that he had given him, them, they would never have had to have judges at all. God wanted them to be an example to all the peoples around them, but they just kept following what the other people were doing. The Israelites knew better. They just kept breaking God's commandments anyway, but then they repented and seemed to go back but they kept doing the same thing over and over again. Does it surprise you that they kept doing the same things again? Well, let me ask you a question. Do you keep doing some of the things over and over again that mommy and daddy tell you not to do? If they tell you to not play a certain game on your video or not watch a certain TV show or it's no TV time, do you try to sneak and do it anyway? Is that a sin that goes against your mommy and daddy? One of the commandments is to honor your father and your mother. That means to obey them. Sometimes we do the same things over and over again too. Even grown-ups do that. You can't do the same thing over and over again and expect things to turn out differently. We can be very like the Israelites if we are not careful. We can find out that we can keep disregarding God too. Well, we all do things that we shouldn't do. We sin against God, we sin against our parents, just like the Israelites did. We keep doing the same things over and over again. Now, what do we do when we realize that we have done wrong? What does God say that we should do if we look in his Bible, in the book of 1 John, verse 9, we find this verse. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Now, to confess means to tell Jesus that you did something wrong. Tell your mommy and daddy, that's also confessing. Mommy, Daddy, I lied to you, or I didn't pick up my toys like you told me to. That's confession, and you can talk to Jesus about those things, and he will forgive you. And then it will be like you never even did that. But then, as you continue on, you need to try not to do the same things again. Well, 
I want you to think of repenting in this way. If you are going in one direction and all of a sudden you realize, oh, I did something wrong, I'm sorry God, that is like turning around and going in the other direction. You reverse directions and you keep going in the right direction. Try not to turn back the other way. Well, I want you to talk to Jesus this week and tell him some of the things that you may have done wrong. No one in the world has never done anything wrong. There is no one that has never sinned. So tell God about some of the things that you may have done this week and try to please God and do what he wants for you. Now we're gonna talk about our memory verse and it is a new one. So I'm just gonna read it to you a couple of times. We're gonna be doing it for the next four weeks. So it goes like this. God is gracious and compassionate, slow to get angry and quick to forgive. God is love. And that comes from the book of Nehemiah, chapter nine, verse 17, the second part. Let's try it again. God is gracious and compassionate slow to get angry and quick to forgive. God is love. Nehemiah 9, verse 17. Now let's see if we can do a couple of uh, signs with it. God is gracious and compassionate, slow to get angry and quick to forgive. God is love. Nehemiah chapter 9 verse 17. You can go ahead and watch it over a couple times and see if you can practice. I want to show you our craft for today. I already kind of showed it to you. It's the circle of Israel's disobedience and you'll be able to get this on the website. You can color the different pieces and cut it out, put it up somewhere to remind you that when you sin the same way all the time, you're going to get the same results. Let's go ahead and say a little prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you that you take such good care of us. Help us to confess what we've done wrong, to ask for your forgiveness, and try really hard not to sin again. We love you, Jesus. Amen.